Morning Ian. Morning alright. First Sunday in Advent. Absolutely. Oh, well has the Grand Wayne's been saying how many sleeps it is to Christmas now? They've certainly been talking about it. Aye, well, how many is it? It's 26 I 26, think. 26, good. Aye. At least the school I went to is 26. <laughs> so Liz will be already packing up the stuff oh, to I'm get sure for Christmas. She, well I don't know about me, but everybody else will be looked after. <laughs> so, this is the Road to Bethlehem. The Road to Bethlehem starts today uh, on this first Sunday in Advent and we'll journey that, through that road together till we come to the birth of the Christ child on Christmas morning. Look forward to that, Don. Indeed. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what's coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, Stand up and lift your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the anxieties of life and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come and all of those who live in the face of the whole earth be always in the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand up before the Son of Man. Father, we acknowledge that it is getting colder. At times our eyes water and our cheeks sting. And perhaps we long for those long days again when the nights get shorter. And we long for the first sign of spring. But no matter what, we rejoice we can worship you and delight in the special pleasure that every season brings. And especially for the mysterious beauty of winter. We know that it is not easy for everyone at this time and we pray for those who face hardship because of winter, who can't afford heating or food. Open our hearts to reach out to all in need. Remind us of the perspective of children who love the snow, who find it magical, a change from the routine. Give us then their eyes to see the gifts all around us, the simple pleasures of each other's company. But as some find joy and beauty this week, we know others are sad and we pray for them, those who are sorrowing over the loss of loved ones, those who feel the heavy weight of sickness, we pray for peace even if it comes one small flake at a time. And we pray for the folk we know, the folk we live next to, the folk we meet in the streets and in the shops. Father, on this first Sunday of Advent, we turn our thoughts towards Bethlehem. And that light that shone in the darkness and the assurance that it has never been put out Father, we trust in that. Be with us now as we take our journey towards the Christ child. Amen. Have you noticed how uncomfortable or fidgety people become when nothing is going on? Sergei Rachmaninoff recalled a piano recital in his youth his first piece was a Beethoven sonata that had several long rests. During the third of these long rests, 
a motherly lady leaned forward and in a whisper said, don't worry, just play something you know. How many of you can recall your first date? Did you have longish, awkward pauses of silence, struggling to relax in conversation? Most folks don't handle those nervous pauses well, nor are we too good at waiting either. A man in a restaurant asked a waiter passing his table, excuse me, but how long have you been working here? About a year, answered the waiter, to which the man replied, in that case, it couldn't have been you who took my order. Waiting. Waiting. It can be an awkward, even worryingly nerve-inducing time. But over the next few weeks, life won't be tiresome, as our children and our grandchildren, our neighbours' children, yes, and a few adults too, become restless with expectation and excitement. Waiting on? What else but the coming of Christmas? Yes, even in these COVID days, as we swing between tiers of lockdown, nothing will stop Christmas and the greatest story ever told. That is as it should be for the people of God as we approach the waiting time, what we might term the adventure of these pre-Christmas days. The Old Testament concluded with Israel waiting for the Messiah and the New Testament ends with Christ's followers awaiting his return. Waiting can be increasingly difficult. Indeed, much of everyday life is spent waiting. But recently with the pandemic, we are so much more aware of the waiting time as the immediate medical and nursing needs of dealing with thousands of cases of the second wave of COVID-19 has seen our health service struggle to deal with the normal everyday but crucial health service procedures that people are in desperate need of. Not forgetting those tested for COVID and waiting the outcome. There's the cancellation of operations, treatment and appointments, highlights that life at this moment in time has become one vast NHS waiting room. In everyday life, and for some considerable time to come, even with the hopeful news of recent vaccine breakthroughs, we must be patient. As patient as the Christian waiting the return of the Messiah. Christ was as explicit as he could be, for no one knows the hour or even the day when the Son of Man will return. After all, there are two dangers in trying to rush God. One is that we ignore our present responsibilities those much-needed demands of the here and now. An 11-year-old scout returned from his first camp and proudly showed Mum two badges he'd been awarded. One was for swimming, the other for naming the most trees and birds on a nature hike. But Mum noticed another wee badge in his shirt pocket. What's that badge for, she said. Oh, I got that for the neatest kit bag for coming home. I'm so proud of you, Mum beamed. It's no big deal, Mum, said the scout. I never unpacked my kit bag when I got there. If we constantly look to God to right the world's wrongs, and some interpret this will be in the form of a great cataclysmic conclusion to life on this earth, no, it is not going to be COVID, then we may never unpack our bags and realise that it is here and now where God has placed us where our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. So be patient in this Advent waiting time, as God challenges us to be faithful again and again. Just as in Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus is travelling the world in search of adventure while back home, his beautiful wife Penelope has been pursued by various suitors, leaving and seeking to take advantage of Odysseus's long absence. To keep these suitors at bay, Penelope announces that when she has completed a weaving a particular garment, she will indeed choose a new partner. But what her suitors didn't know was that each night Penelope undid the stitches she put in during daytime, so always remaining faithful 
to Odysseus until he was to return. Our call to be faithful is to wait for Christ's return. We are his body in the world, called to share in his work, and after 2,000 years, now is not the time to give up. We often hear criticism of the church, some justified, some absolutely not. We know we are not perfect, and some of what we do may be mundane. A lady in a former congregation once told me that she feared meeting God to look at his nail-pierced wrists, and he asks, what have you suffered? And she would only be able to say, I got a paper cut on my fingers folding the Sunday order of service. Well, not in these present order of serviceless days, but normally folding the order of service is important. Singing in the choir is important. Cleaning the sanctuary, our grounds, looking after them, that's important too. Working with our young people, responsibility for our finances, maintenance and repairs, all this is important. Even making the tea, manning the audiovisual desk, being involved in many different aspects of church life is important. Being at worship is important. If not in the church, well, how about online, like many who join us this morning on Facebook and YouTube? Some criticism may be justified, and we cannot overlook many of the church's problems, but neither should we hide the Kirk's accomplishments. We need to be like that young scout. We must be prepared. Prepared for Christ, whether he should come tomorrow or in 20 years' time. After all, nothing is more unpredictable than the future. If there is one lesson from history, unpredictability has come home to roost in 2020. John Ruskin once wrote, Let every dawn of morning be to you as the beginning of life, and every setting sun be to you as its close. Then let every one of these short lives leave its sure record of some kindly thing done for others, some goodly strength of knowledge gained for yourself. If this were to be your last moments, then the good you would do, do now. The love that you would give, give now. The commitment you would make, make now. Whatever it needs in this waiting room, be patient, be faithful, be prepared. And now as we begin the Advent journey towards Bethlehem, may God bless you wherever you are and bless those whom you love wherever they are. And may God give us all good days, good company and good hope. And thank you for worshipping with the Reverend Dean and I this morning from Ross Priory. <laughs>